All right, good afternoon. Um, as you will have seen this morning, members of the Security Council stood for a moment of silence in remembrance of the victims of the Saturday's shooting at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. Over the weekend, we issued a statement from the Secretary General strongly condemning the attack and adding that the shooting in Pittsburgh is a painful reminder of continuing anti-Semitism. Jews across the world continue to be attacked for no other reason than their identity. Anti-Semitism is a menace to democratic values, and peace, uh, democratic values and peace and should have no place in the 21st century. The Secretary General calls for a united front, bringing together authorities at all levels, civil society, religious and community leaders, and the public at large, to roll back the forces of racism, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and other forms of hatred, bigotry, discrimination, and xenophobia gaining strength in many parts of the world. And also over the weekend, we issued a statement, uh, in fact, yesterday, in which the Secretary General said he is following the latest developments in Sri Lanka with great concern. He calls on the government to respect the democratic values and constitutional provisions and the process, uphold the rule of law, and ensure the safety and security of all Sri Lankans. The Secretary General urges all parties to exercise restraint and address the unfolding situation in a peaceful manner. And we have an update on the attack that took place over the weekend against the UN mission in Mali that involved an improvised explosive device and small arms fire in the Mopti region. The mission reports that five Togolese peacekeepers were wounded and were not were evacuated to UN facilities in Sivare, where they have been treated for their injuries. In a statement uh, over the weekend, the Secretary General condemned the attack as well as the one against the camp in Burr, which resulted in two peacekeepers from Burkina Faso being killed and 11 others being wounded. The Secretary General recalls that attacks targeting UN peacekeepers may constitute war crimes under international law and that the perpetrators should be brought, need to be brought to justice. And in Uppsala, Sweden today, the Deputy Secretary General, Mina Mohammed spoke at the Third General Assembly of the ACT Alliance, which is a coalition of 150 church and church-related organizations. She told the group that faith organizations and their leaders have long played a critical role in addressing the needs of those left behind. She said the continued support and activism of faith-based organization will be essential as we forge ahead in our quest to achieve the sustainable development goals for all people. When we speak of putting people first, she said, we must specially consider how the promise of the SDGs can be made real for marginalized people. For as the Bible says, she sa we should, quote, love our neighbor as ourselves. Her remarks are online, and the Deputy Secretary General is expected back in New York later today. Meanwhile, back here, the Emergency Relief Coordinator, Mark Lowcock, briefed the Security Council on Syria and said that we, we have seen a glimmer of hope in the weeks of relative calm since the agreement in Idlib was reached. He added that it is very important for millions of people in Idlib that this remains the case. He noted that over the first seven months of the year, an average of almost 5.5 million people were reached with life-saving assistance each month. In September, nearly 2.5 million people reached with food aid from Damascus. Mr. Lowcock said humanitarian convoy had been planned on Saturday for Rubcon, which had not received assistance since January, but reports of insecurity along the uh, route forced the UN and its partners to postpone the convoy. Mr. Lowcock warned that the dire humanitarian situation in Rukban Ruk uh, cannot be allowed to continue and that the UN is ready and willing to proceed with the convoy immediately. The Emergency Relief Coordinator called Saturday, called on the Security Council to support the renewal for another year of Resolution 2165, in particular to sustain cross-border aid essential to support and protect more than three million people in Idlib. His remarks are available online. And our humanitarian colleagues tell us they are concerned about the resurgence in insecurity in the Lake Chad Basin, in uh, the Lake region in the west of Chad. The situation has forced some aid agencies to suspend operations, leaving tens of thousands of people without food and health services. Efforts are underway to resume operations and ensure the safe delivery of aid to the most vulnerable people. In the, in the Lak region, Boko Haram activities have led to internal displacement of 124,000 people and the arrival of 11,000 Nigerians. Food insecurity and malnutrition have worsened over the past months. Some 187,000 people face severe food insecurity, while severe and, while severe and global malnutrition, acute malnutrition levels have surpassed emergency threshold. 
And lastly, as you may have seen, the World Health Organization today released a report that says that 93% of the world's children breathe toxic air every day. That's uh, according to a report that says 1.8 billion children breathe air that is so polluted it puts their health and development at serious risk, while many of them die. WHO estimates that in 2016, 600,000 children died from acute lower respiratory infections caused by polluted air. Air pollution also impacts neurodevelopment and cognitive ability and can trigger asthma and childhood cancer. Children who have been exposed to high levels of air pollution may be at greater risk for chronic diseases such as cardiovascular diseases later in life. And that is uh, it from me, but I'm happy to answer any queries you may have. Edie. Uh, thank you, Stefan. As a follow-up um, on the Secretary General's statement on Sri Lanka, um, is the UN doing anything on the ground to follow up with its concerns about the political development? Yes, there? the uh, the resident coordinator uh, in Sri Lanka met with the Speaker of Parliament, uh, stressing the Secretary General's message for the need to respect democratic values and constitutional provisions and process, uphold the rule of law, and ensure the safety and security of all Sri Lankans. If there's anything else, I will let you know. Thank you, Stefan. Um, the caravan continues its movement towards the southern border of mm -hmm. the United States. 500 people just joined the caravan from El Salvador, so we have a second group that are moving up. Is any concerns um, by the United Nations of the recent announcement of mobilization of at least at 5,000 military men uh, to the southern border by the United States government to try to protect the border um, in terms of the um, possibilities of getting the asylum? Look, I mean, I think our, our, our concerns are at various levels. Obviously, first and foremost, a humanitarian concern uh, for the safety and well-being of this group of people who are traveling, a lot of them obviously currently in Mexico. I think, as we've said, our colleagues at UNHCR, International Organization for Migration, and UNICEF are on the ground trying to bring uh, some humanitarian uh, support. It is clear that countries have a sovereign right to defend their own borders and to to uh, to put in the policies they feel they need to at their own borders. That's a, that's a sovereign right that is clear to all. Uh, I think this case, as so many other cases of people on the move, uh, just goes to illustrate yet again uh, the need for uh, the global uh, the global compact on migration on how countries of origin countries of destination uh, and countries of transit can best deal with people who are on the move people will be on the move always uh, they have been since we were able to move uh, it's about managing uh, that movement that respects the rights of, of refugees that respects the dignity of migrants and that respects the sovereign right of each member state of the United Nations to control their borders. Mr. Klein, might you have a follow-up? Actually, a quick follow-up on yes. that, but I have another yep. question. The, the quick follow-up is um, since some of the um, members of the uh, caravan have applied for and I believe have been accepted for asylum in Mexico, others, however, have refused and insist on going on to the United States. So I guess my first question here is, isn't, isn't there um, an obligation on the part of the asylum seekers to apply for asylum in the first country in transit that offers them that in, in, a, quote, in a relatively safe environment, or do they get to choose where they want to seek asylum? So that's, that, that's the follow-up question. Mm -hmm. And your other question? The, uh, yeah, the other question is uh, on the uh, election in Brazil of uh, President-elect Bolsonaro, uh, who I'm probably mispronouncing. Um, is the Secretary General planning, if he hasn't already, uh, to extend congratulations, a call to him? Uh, and does he have any concern uh, about the um, uh, some of the extreme uh, popular statements that he has made, uh, including uh, homophobic remarks, sexist remarks, talk, talk about in the past 
uh, his, his installing the military into the cabinet, uh, call for even a coup, et cetera. Does he have any concern sure. uh, on that populist I mean, ob obviously, uh, the, the, the standard procedures will be followed and, uh, in terms of when new, uh, new, new heads of states uh, come on board. The Secretary General has taken note of the results of the, uh, of the elections in, in Brazil. He commends the authorities of Brazil for the orderly holding of the legislative, regional, and presidential elections. The Secretary General congratulates the Brazilian people for the democratic spirit shown in their participation. And he underlines the importance of Brazil's contributions to the organization and looks forward to continuing our collab collaboration. The new president, I think, will take, uh, will take office, if I'm not mistaken, on January 1st. Uh, and we look forward as, uh, to continuing the very important relationship that the United Nations has with Brazil. Brazil has a critical role to play, play on many of the files uh, that are up on the agenda of the United Nations. Uh, on your first question, uh, you know, they, they are, uh, there are rights that refugees have, and, uh, and, and in terms of the refugee policy and legal framework, I would refer your questions to UNHCR. Mr. Bayes. Uh, yes. Um, in under two weeks' time, uh, a number of world leaders have announced that they're going to Paris mm -hmm. for the commemoration of the armistice, the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I, and then the opening of the, of the Paris Peace Forum. Uh, will the Secretary General be attending? We do not have an official announcement to make at this time, but I hope to be able to make one soon, which will hopefully answer your question. Mr. Abadi. Thank you, Stefan. Regarding the killing of journalist uh, uh, Kakoshi, uh, U.S. Secretary of Defense James Mattis said that the killing threatens regional stability. Is the Secretary General of the same view? Look, uh, First of all, I think the Secretary General spoke out extremely clearly on uh, the global issue of the targeting and killing of journalists and the message we issued on Friday. I don't think he could be any clearer uh, and underscore the fact that the vast, vast majority of targeted killings of journalists goes unpunished. It goes on with full impunity. This is something of great concern to him. In terms of this case, the Secretary General uh, would like to see uh, uh, two countries most uh, involved in this conduct an investigation. Uh, we would like to see the results of those, uh, those investigations. And it's clear that you know, the, relation, the, 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 the diplomatic relationships between, um, uh, between Turkey and Saudi Arabia are very important uh, to the stability of the region. Evelyn and then Masoud. Just to follow up what Joe Klein said, is the Secretary General worried at all about the Brazilian election? I, or I, the answer is no, right? Well, I'm, I'm always happy for people to ask and answer the questions at the same time. It makes my job uh, easier. Maybe we could try it on Halloween. All of you could take, take your turn. Um, you know, the, the point being is that there was an election. Uh, the election is over. The people of Brazil have participated in a very vibrant democratic exercise. Uh, the Secretary General will uh, look forward to continuing the cooperation he's had with Brazil uh, when the new president takes office on, uh, on January 1st. Masoud then Linda. Yeah, thank you, Stefan. Does the Secretary General have any reaction to the killing of the Palestinians, five Palestinians over the weekend, and three Palestinians killed today in Israeli air raid? Does he have anything to say about that? Uh, uh, yes, the Secretary General deplores the deaths of three Palestinian children last night as a result of an Israeli airstrike near Gaza. Targeting of children or exposing them to risk leading to violence is utterly unacceptable. His thoughts are with the families and friends of the victims. He appeals to all to refrain from any act that could lead to further casualties, in particular any measures that could place children in harm's way. Uh, and you will have seen that uh, Mr. Mladenov also over, uh, tweeted out his sympathies to the families of the three Palestinian children. Um, and he said such tragedies must be avoided at all costs. Linda. Thank you, Steph. I'm moving a little bit to another continent, to Europe. And- Every I, continent counts. 
<laughs> I was just wondering if you could give us a um, status report on conditions in uh, Ukraine in regards to the conflict, status of humanitarian situation. Let me, uh, I will do that for you tomorrow. I, I mean, or later today. I just don't have an update with me today. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we could refer you back to the – I'll pull up the, the numbers from the WHO, uh, uh, the World Health Organization. But obviously, I think this, this report is important because it also uh, – it ties the issues that are – that we talk about in terms of climate change, in terms of emissions, to health. Uh, the two are intrinsically interrelated, and we see how negatively they can impact children. Madame, all yours.